What's your favorite part about Nate's playing? <sighs> you know, I, I gotta say his tone. His tone is just... It's bar none a fantastic tone. He's got a really great, great sound. It's got a good tone. It's got a good tone, for sure. I guess I really love his tone. Great tone. Like his tone, just, he's got a dial. Nobody can touch that. His tone is really the thing you notice when you hear him play, you know? His tone. Tone. What's the strongest part of my playing? That's a tough one, man. It's tough to pick one. I'm pretty strong in the minor pentatonic, for sure. Based on other people, I mean, I think undisputably my tone is probably, that's what I get the most compliments on, but. Key to my tone, you know, some people would say the pedals, some people say the amps, guitar, but you know. I think it's the fingers, man, it comes down to it. Anybody can, uh, anybody can plug in, but not everybody can play like this guy. Myself. Describe my tone. It's drinkable, it's drinkable. Drinkability is high of my tone. Yeah, sponsors wise, I think um, Ibanez was the first first to hit me up. And um, Yeah. Did you did you want me to teach yourself? Who's the interview with? Mike, how would you describe my Nate's plan? Oh. Some of the best I've ever much less seen in real life. It's it's one of the biggest privileges I could even imagine, much less great as a reality for myself. This is just a real godsend of dream come true for me. If there's one word that I could think of to describe his tone, it would be exquisite. That or immaculate. How did I get hooked up with Nate? I was a huge fan of his solo work, Simply Nate, on MySpace. Um, and I would just message him weekly about it because I thought I thought back then his tone was amazing. He finally needed somebody out on the road, and uh, Parachute couldn't really afford anybody in the budget, so um, he just took me out for free. So I would say like kind of a pilot, co-pilot, kind of a. Uh, I'd say like a, I'd say like a, like a knight in a page, you know. I armor. definitely hand him in the rock scepter, his guitar, but that's merely a vessel for his beautiful golden tone. What's your daily routine like in the duo? Oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll take fun. Well, Nate uh, requests that I kind of hit, I kinda, I'm the first one in the venue. I set up his stuff before anything else is in the venue. Um, and so I'm on his pedal board. By 7.30, I'm working on it, kind of dialing in the tone, kind of adjusting it to the room, the venues. Uh, today, for instance, I was in there a little earlier than usual because he had problems with his tap delay from the night before. So I was really just working the kinks out, kind of adjusting knobs, moving faders, and uh, tapping it. I'm in around 3.30 or 4, but, you know, grab an axe and let my fingers do the talking. Did you say you're underappreciated by Nate? No way. No. Uh, how would you describe your tone? Warm, golden, driven, vintage, golden, beefy when it needs to be. There's a lot of smoothness, mostly reminiscent of, of my voice. Look, if a guitarist is lame, you compliment their tone. Everyone knows that. Hey man, he's full of shit. Don't listen to him. Seriously. You know, man, I don't even know who that guy is. I'm getting him off the bus.